This is uh, the first session for courtroom one for Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. Judge Kirkman presiding, appearing on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Kathy Kennedy Swanson. Appearing on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Uh, Brian Wayne. Thank you. The first case scheduled for this morning is Christopher Neal Day. <clears throat> Yesterday, I was not able to see him due to the indication that he is unavailable due to mental health. It's a hole for Seminole County. Do we have Christopher Neal Day today? Great, thank you. Okay, this is Christopher Neal Day. I have uh, several matters concerning you today. I'm Judge Kirkland, I'm reviewing these cases. There's a hold from Seminole County for violation of probation due to the other uh, cases that I'm about to review. Uh, yes, sir. Um, don't, don't say anything at this point. Um, I am appointing the public defender to represent you on the Orange County cases, and your attorney will advise you not to say anything uh, until you've had an opportunity to talk with your attorney. The Seminole County case will not come into play unless and until you bond out on the Orange County cases or you resolve them, but you need to know, be aware of the fact that there's an, uh, a violation of probation there. In Division 11, there are five charges and they are from June the 21st at Pioneer Road and Silver Star Road. Count one, resisting an officer with violence, $1,000 bond. Count two, resisting without violence. I have changed that bond to the appropriate bond of $150. Count three, criminal mischief. That is a bond of $150. Count three, account for assault on a law enforcement officer that has a bond of $150. And finally, battery in a law enforcement officer. And, and that, that, uh, that um, charge, the fifth charge is actually going to have the bond of $1,500. That is the main charge. So that first charge of resisting with violence now becomes a bond of 150. So the first four have 150 for a total of 600 plus 1500 on the fifth one. Total bond for the five charges then is $2,100. And you have the public defender and that division is DKB. Venus. And that would be number? Division 11. The next matter is from 601 Rollins Street. That would be the address of the Florida Hospital South. Battery on a law enforcement officer bond $1,500. The indication here is the, is the arrest took place at 601 Rollins, but the event that's the subject of the case and the narrative is at North Powers Drive and Silver Star Road. The next matter is an affidavit. Oh, and that, that division is 22. Your Honor, with regards to that, um, the battery on the law enforcement um, officer, um, we'd ask that that be considered a subsidiary um, to the um, 2019 CF 8925 case um, as the events um, 
they could have been combined into one police affidavit. It was just an additional officer that responded to the scene um, that wrote a separate affidavit. I do uh, at this time change that to $150 on that affidavit. The public defender does represent you, Mr. Day, and Division 22, Judge LeBlanc, on that case. There's a final affidavit that has two charges, possession of cocaine, violation of probation, possession of cannabis on view, violation of probation. Those violations of probation come as a result of the other cases. And those are Orange County. And so I appoint the public defender to represent you in Division 15, Judge Traver, on the violation of probation. And that's a no bond case until you see the judge assigned to the case. And I don't have the next hearing, but that would be ordinarily what you would want to do is have a hearing to find out whether that judge will give you a bond. All right. Next case is Aaron Dale Howell. Uh, yesterday I appointed the public defender to represent Aaron Dale Howell, but I am able to see him today. He is before me. The charge is possession of an anti- oh. Okay, we're going to come back to Howell. Yes, Your sure. Honor. All right. This is Juan Roberto Luciano, Jr. Uh, this is a case that has six charges listed. I've appointed the public defender to represent Mr. Luciano. <clears throat> and that's in uh, EAB. Div Division 16. Those charges are as follows, and they are from 8820 South Orange Boston Trail from June the 23rd, day before yesterday. Count one battery on a law enforcement officer. The bond is $2,500. Count two burglary of an unoccupied dwelling, 150. Resisting with violence, 150. Possession of meth, 150. Possession of drug paraphernalia, 100. And resisting without violence, 100. The total bond, therefore, is uh, $3,150 total with the public defender. You can now bond out on those charges. There would be one additional condition. No return to the Baymont Inn, 8820 South Orange Boston Trail, while this case is pending. No contact with anyone that's named or referred to in the narrative of the arrest affidavit as being a victim or a witness. Is this Aaron Dale Howell? No, you are. Okay. This is William Marcus Young. Uh, William M. Young. All right, Mr. Nice. Young. This is a city ordinance violation uh, entitled disorderly conduct from Colonial Magnolia for uh, uh, 
uh, a panhandling situation among traffic. The city may have an offer to resolve this case at first appearances. On behalf of the city, the offer is uh, credit for time served. Okay. You, you have an option at this point. Um, one is if you feel you should not try to resolve the case today, you can bond out. Your bond is set at $250. On the other hand, if you decide to enter a plea to the charge, the sentence would be time served to be released later on today. What is your full legal name? Uh, William M. Young, Jr. And your date of birth? October the 9th, 1971. Thank you. Um, how do you plead to the city ordinance violation of disorderly conduct? No contest. Okay. And a plea of no contest is one in which you you are not admitting any particular set of facts, but, but out of convenience, you feel it's best to resolve the case and end it today. Is that what you're intending to do? Uh, yes. And in fact, is that the location and the, and the situation where you were arrested? It was at uh, Magnolia and Colonial uh, yester yesterday? Uh, no, it was just on East Colonial. East Colonial. It right. wasn't on Magnolia, but it was. Um, well, near an intersection. Uh, almost. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any questions you want to ask me about the case, the facts, the, the plea, or the sentence? Uh, yes, uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, I'm concerning a, a beer. The last time I had an open container here. Um, is it. Am I prohibited from purchasing the same item or anything? Because uh, I don't want to run into those conflicts. No. Okay. Okay. No. Nope. The sentence is simply uh, about what about what I'm going to um, indicate, and that is, it's an adjudication for a city ordinance violation. It's it's um, three days credit for three days served. You'll be released later on today, and I'll order you. I will order you not to go to the intersection of Magnolia and Colonial during the next 177 days, and court costs will go into a civil judgment. So okay. you'll be released today. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Ebarra is the next case. Your Honor, Mr. Howell refused to attend. Okay. With regard to Mr. Howell, um, that is what happened yesterday. Uh, and so I will not reset it any longer. Um, and we'll see what happens, what develops in the future. Brian, are you saying the bonds? Mr. Uh, yes, the bond, the bond is $1,000 for possession of an anti shoplifting device. Thank you, Your Honor. Th this is Brian Ab Abara. Yeah, so I don't have any of that before me. Um, what's the state? What is the state's position concerning the out on bond portion? No action, Your Honor. Okay, that that hold then is released at this time. If he if he does post a one thousand dollar bond, he'll be able to secure his release, notwithstanding that prior case. Mr. Barra is uh, here because of a capius from Division Fourteen. Uh, the original charge is attempted robbery and battery. This capius indicates that a, a con, a, an information was filed and there was a failure to appear for a status hearing on May the 17th and the conditional release was revoked. You're held without bond until you see the judge in Division 14. Would you like to be represented by an attorney or are you represented by an attorney right now? No, I'd like to play no contest. That cannot be done. Uh, that, that's, this is a type of case where the judge in Division 14 is the only person that can handle that. You can request a hearing in front of that judge if that's what your goal is. Is this a does, hearing does, today? Does he have an attorney? Yes. Public public you do have the public defender right now, and you can talk with the public defender that's, that's next to you, but, the, but, I, but I am not allowed to try to resolve this case today. When is my next court date? 
Um, that's not known. Uh, that's why you want to talk with, with your attorney to, to get it, uh, an early, uh, as early as possible hearing on your behalf if you want to resolve the case. The next case scheduled is Sean Wicks. This is a petty theft charge from yesterday at 2500 South Kirk Monroe. That's a Walmart store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't say anything. Um, I don't have that you have requested an attorney. Is that correct that you did not ask for an attorney? Well, I'd ask for an attorney. I represent myself on the West Coast. I'm trying to get a Greyhound back there. I'll tell you how the situation is. Okay, it's real simple. I put some sweatpants, sweatpants inside my hey, jeans. Hold, hold on. Hold Why don't you let me explain my situation? Hold on. Hold on. Do you think it would be best to talk with an attorney before you decide what what to do today? Why I want to turn? Why I talk to an attorney? It's a five hundred. It's a it's a petty theft charge. It's nothing, yo. All I did was take the sweatpants, put them in my jeans. The second I talked to you, and they took them out. I got out of there. And the police rolled up on me and they put me in zip ties. I want compensation because he put me in zip ties and he hurt me. This is America, man. I want a Greyhound back to the West Coast. I don't like this place, man. All they've done is hurt me in Florida and it sucks down here, man. Okay. I don't what like I'm, it, man. Give me that to my state, California. What I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent uh, Sean Wicks so that if he makes a decision to try to resolve the case today, it will be uh, with advice of counsel, particularly with how theft works. A first time petty theft is a second degree misdemeanor. A second petty theft is a first degree misdemeanor. And a third petty theft can be charged as a felony, even though each individual case may have been for a small item or an inexpensive. It was an item for seven ninety nine. I don't, I don't want you to say anything more until you've talked with your American, attorney. Um, I'm not, I'm not, saying you cannot resolve the case, but I do not want to hear anything from you until you've had an opportunity to talk with your attorney right now. So you can proceed. Exactly I, want you to talk, I want you to talk I want you to talk with your public defender next, right now. I don't want a public defender. Okay. Exactly. Well, I can represent myself. I, this is America, I, man. I, I believe that you need representation. Why do you believe based, I'm from the West Coast? I don't upon, need no one, man. Based upon what you're saying. Kill Cali, homie. There is no offer, Your Honor. There may be some competency issues. Just give me a Greyhound back to the West Coast. I item for seven ninety nine, man. Why are you like tripping about this shit, man? Right. Your officer did brutality to me. He put. Me this is Oscar Bayona. Yes. This is a case from Osceola County, which is Kissimmee, uh, the adjoining county, and part of the 9th District. Um, this is traffic. This is uh, a hold for a charge that's shown to be um, driving with, with, without the appropriate li driver's license. It has a bond of $1,000, meaning you, if you choose to, you can bond out here and then, and then go to Kissimmee to see the, the judge there for your next hearing. But if you take no action, and if you have no Orange County cases, you'll be transported to Kissimmee later on today or tomorrow okay. to see and the judge there. Quick. I don't have the file. I only have what I just read to you. Okay, what is the situation? I know that I'm not, I haven't spoken to my attorney. Can I tell you we can be my private defender? Okay, I know I'm not in Orange County, the one that I bought property on, so I know that I'm somewhere in the Panhandle or wherever the hell I am. I don't know what program it actually put me in. I told them last night, I know that this is not 33rd, where it's supposed to be in Orange County. So I need to actually, somebody to actually tell me what's going on. Because I feel that I'm, I'm, I know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not crazy. Okay. All I, all I can do is read read the warrant arrest affidavit well, to nobody's you. Called, nobody's and, called Kissimmee and, 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 and Osceola, the Osceola County will take you before the judge there and that judge will have the file and can discuss these issues with you. Yeah, but nobody's called. That'll, that'll be later on today or tomorrow. Well, when am I going to see an attorney? Because I feel like I'm actually, this is a false arrest. I'm actually, I'm held against my will. Okay. Osceola County is actually here to pick him up now. All right.
Uh, we have Mr. Ram Lockton. Uh, what's, what's the last name? Ram Lockton. R A M L O C H A N, Nepal. See if we can locate. We will locate it. I recognize Victor Mead before me. Your Honor, yes. I apologize. I did not expect to be in court today, but uh, nice to see you again. We, um, this being a courtroom inside of the jail, we are, we are um, we rec we recognize that sometimes it's short notice situations, so that's to be excused. It is a warrant for. Neapol uh, Ramlakan? Yes. Okay. It's uh, a charge that's in Division 20. He did request a public defender. That is, he's, he signed an application. Uh, in fact, is he, is he, has he uh, hired you or is that in process? Well, I've known Mr. Ramlakan over 30 years. I'll be in the case. I talked to him the other day. All right. Um, it, it is an arrest warrant, and the judge that signed the warrant identified the date as being June the 23rd, which is day before yesterday, as being the, the time of the event, and has set the bond at $10,000. Yes. And I would add the, the uh, conditions that are associated with such a charge, and that is no contact with the person that's named or referred to as a victim or witness. And that's present in every case, but it's emphasized in a case like this. That the, and, and there would be another one um, that would be appropriate, and that is not to have any um, contact with any anyone under the age of 18 knowingly while the case is pending. Now, the, the case is with an elderly person, by the way. I, I know it says otherwise. I, I read the affidavit. It says uh, the person no, says the victim is 88 person. years old. It's over 18 by a person over 18. All so right. They're, they're not, All right. Not uh, I will. I will. Then that that condition I just that I just uh, set out would be inappropriate. The state will request a um, a twenty thousand dollar bond, Your Honor. I didn't have a chance to read it. I gave it to Mr. Me to read his um, affidavit as well. We'd ask for no return to the assisted living home or nursing home facility. Um, we ask for no weapons, no firearms as well. And what's the address of that assisted living? One moment, Your Honor, please. Just has Silver Lakes Village. All right. Um, I guess this is the 5102 Cinder Lane Parkway. All right. He resides there. He will not be allowed to reside there so long as uh, the case is active. So he may need to take a, um, a short um, alternative. I think that still would be appropriate. I am not raising the bond. I, I find that Judge Judge Bell uh, determined that the appropriate bond was ten thousand dollars, and I will uh, respect that amount of bond. And so it's the the no contact and the no return uh, will be appropriate. Will he be able to go there to get his stuff? Yes, he he can go there one time with the appropriate uh, person. Uh, if it's in the city, it would be with a police officer. If it's in the county, it would be with a deputy. Yes, sir. Thank you. One time to get clothing, personal flex, motor vehicle tools, whatever you can identify as yours, you can uh, remove while the case is pending. Thank you. Nice to see you again. No. No. I did not appoint the public defender based on uh, Mr. Meade's uh, assertion that he will be representing the defendant. 
Next case will be Brandon Brandt. All right, yes, Michael Ahern will be the next case. This is Michael David Ahern. The case is one from yesterday, State Road 408, westbound at the Conway Road entrance ramp. There are four charges. Count one, petty theft with two prior convictions listed as a felony with a bond of $1,000. Count two, tampering with a um, coin-operated machine. $150 bond, trespassing, $100 bond, loiter and prowling, $100 bond. Total bond then, $1,350. The public defender's appointed to represent you in Division 15. There would be a no return. The no return is for the Toll Plaza, located at 408 and Conway Road entrance ramp. While the case is pending, the case uh, is complicated by the following. It indicates that in case number 2019, MO1155, he uh, was released on his own recognizance on a misdemeanor charge arraignment scheduled for July the 16th. What's the state's position concerning his prior case? I will leave in the court's discretion. All right. I find that the following is to be done concerning this case. On that prior case, 2019 MO1155, I find that I am to revoke the bond in that case and set a new bond, or to set a bond. He was released without having to post bond. He will, he will now post a bond of $1,000 in that case. So the total bond for all of these matters totals um, uh, $2,350. You have the public defender on these charges. Brandon Bryant. This is an arrest affidavit from yesterday. Aggravated assault with a weapon. Bond set at $3,500. It's from 3000 Clarkona Road, number 1117. The victim is listed as Richard Eagle. The public defender is appointed to represent you in Division 19. No contact with the, persons, with the person that's listed as the victim. Not to be in possession of any weapon, including a firearm, uh, and including a pellet gun. All the cases pending. The, there is a second arrest affidavit. The public defender is appointed to represent Mr. Bryant in Division 20 on the second affidavit, and it is for introducing contraband into a county facility, $1,000, and possession of drug paraphernalia bond, $100. And that is a second um, incident a separate incident, and so those bonds will stand. The total bond then for your three charges total $4,600. And you have the public defender in Division 19 and in Division 20. Two felonies and a misdemeanor. This is Andrew Casey Butterworth.
In Division 20, a capius was issued for the original charge delivery of heroin, but this was a failure to appear on June the 20th. Release was revoked at that time, and you're held without bond until you see the judge in Division 20. Do you have the public defender in Division 20 already? So that's the next step. Um, you, you, you will get a hearing before the judge in Division 20. Next. Tony Coker. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Mr. Coker, Mr. Coker has an arrest affidavit that arose out of a traffic citation. Count one, fleeing, attempting to elude, no bond, but I'll be setting the conditions today. Count two, driving while license revoked as a habitual traffic offender, bond 2,500. Count three, a tag charge, bond 100. 40, 4339 Solomon Drive is the uh, location. The traffic ticket indicates it's at Willie Mays Parkway and L.B. McLeod. The public defenders appointed to represent you in Division 14. The state may be heard concerning requests for bond. Uh, I am to decide the amount of bond based upon the facts alleged. Uh, and that is, were you driving a motor vehicle and did you endanger yourself or a passenger in the car or pedestrians or other drivers? Uh, was there a crash? Was there excessive speed or running a red light? Were you leaving a, a more serious crime and trying to escape from that? Have you had a fleeing conviction in the past? And what is your general uh, history, criminal history? State may be heard. Um, we request $3,500 bond as count one. Um, count two. 150, count 3, 100. All right. The uh, facts of the case would indicate that the appropriate uh, setting of bond would be for count 1, $3,500. Count 2 would be a bond of $150. Count 3, $100. So, Mr. Coker, your total bond will be $3,750. You do have the public defender in Division 14. And I do order that you not drive unless and until your license has been reinstated. Talk to your attorney before you say anything on the record. Next case schedule is Christopher Doyle Hilton. Hilton? Yes, sir. This is a warrant that comes from Osceola County. The charge is felony battery. It refers to a date of June the 3rd, 2019. The judge in Osceola County has ordered that you be held on a no bond status, no contact with the victim, no return to the scene, and no weapons or firearms. When you arrive in Kissimmee and you see the county judge at first appearances, that judge ordinarily uh, has the requirement of reviewing the case to determine an appropriate bond. A felony battery in and of itself would not be a no bond case, but that will be a matter to that will be raised at your uh, 
first appearance in Osceola County. They should take you today or tomorrow to see that judge if you have no Orange County cases. Wait just a moment. This, this is an Orange County case, Your Honor. It is an Orange County case. Yes. Let me back up then. Okay, so, so what, what occurred was he was arrested in Osceola County and brought to Orange County for this case. So I, need the, I would need a, the affidavit that was used to secure this warrant because um, I don't believe he is to be left at no bond for felony battery. Unless I see something that I, I'm not aware of. I don't have the document, but it would okay, be the we'll, website. We'll, we'll locate that and give that to uh, State and Defense. So we'll get three copies. Mr. Wayne, did you need a copy? Did you, uh, you read it online? The warrant? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I can have a copy. You have a copy? Or no, I'll need a copy. Okay. Uh, you, you do or do not have a copy? I do not have a copy. Okay. okay. I don't need a copy. So we'll get, we'll get two more copies. Both we'll get to your copies right now. It's four pages, so we'll have to go through that. Both the state and the public defender's office have access to Odyssey to pull up the uh, right. information, Your Honor. Okay, here's the. May I approach, Your Honor?
Is there a request from the state for a particular set of conditions of release? Your Honor, we would ask for a $5,000 bond. We'd ask for no contact with the victim. I believe no return to the location, which was the Sun Pass office. No weapons, no firearms, no drugs or alcohol. The uh, appropriate conditions of the case based upon the affidavit um, would be a bond of $5,000, no contact with the victim, no contact with anyone that's named or referred to as a witness or a potential witness, no return to that um, Sun Pass location, no weapons or firearms, and th those are essentially the conditions set by the judge that signed the warrant other than I've set the bond and I've added the uh, witnesses to the no contact as well as victim. Those are, those are the conditions basically of, of every case, but they're emphasized in this kind of case to make sure there's no contact while the case is pending. So you can now bond out on a $5,000 bond. Your Honor, I have midterms this week. I go to Valencia College. I have $200 on me. I was wondering if you could reduce my bond. What they stated in the affidavit is not correct at all. Um, I've, I've considered those, those issues, and um, I, I am required to take the allegations in the affidavit uh, as the basis for the bond at first appearance is I cannot uh, have a, I cannot effectively have a hearing to try to decide the difference between various persons' uh, point of view or, or statements or anything like that. I have to take this set of allegations as being the basis for my decision, and I find that I find that five thousand dollars would be the only appropriate bond based upon those allegations. And, and I'm not diminishing your statement that, that they're not correct. Uh, I simply don't know that one way or the other, and, and it's not my obligation to try to figure that out today unless it's on its face completely um, in error. The judge that signed the warrant originally has, dis has determined that there's probable cause for the case, and I have just reviewed the affidavit and made that secondary decision that it's appropriate, and I have determined that there should be bond. That first judge thought there should be no bond based upon the allegations. So um, the only thing I can do is uh, advise you to follow the instructions of your public defender and try to get someone to post the bond as fast as they can so that you can uh, make your midterms. Next case is Andre Fairnot. And Your Honor, in this case, it comes in with a $10,000 bond. I believe count one is a punished by life offense and should not have a bond. All right. The uh, case is a warrant arrest affidavit. It refers to June the 23rd, day before yesterday, and it has Burglary of an occupied dwelling with assault or battery therein, $10,000. Battery, $500. And criminal mischief, $150. No contact with the victim, no return to the location. May be modified by the first appearance judge. Judge Bell signed this warrant. It does have a notice of invocation of constitutional rights attached, and the public defender is appointed today to represent Mr. Fairnot in Division 11, and the state can be heard as to why I should uh, uh, eliminate the bond set by Judge Bell and insert a no bond status. Your Honor, looking at the facts of this case, it looks like the victim and the defendant were at a club or outing of some sort. Um, the security had to remove this defendant from that victim. 
I believe twice in the facility. The victim then goes home, talks to friends, and then she's in her home where all windows and doors are locked. She sees somebody or hears somebody banging on her bedroom window. She ignores it. Um, she then calls the police after seeing a reflection. The victim then sees this defendant pull out the screen window and then force his way in the house. She's screaming to 911 her address um, while she's trying to get him close the door, excuse me, close the window, excuse me, on him so he cannot make further entrance into the apartment um, where he then strikes the victim um, at that time. I think the serious nature of him coming to a closed home as well as being told to leave her alone two times prior or having to be removed from her two times prior in that same evening um, we believe that the bond should be at no bonds. There was a case that just came out on June the 12th from the 3rd um, DCA. The site is 44 Florida Law Weekly D1500. Um, it's Thornton v. Jr. It says that it's just not practical to have a full author hearing at um, initial appearance just based on the limited nature and time of this. However, um, the court can set a no bond and leave it to the discretion of the trial court to have a full-fledged author hearing regarding proof evident and presumption. Here's the Bell's Division 50. She's a county court judge. This is a circuit case. Okay. Um, I do believe that I am to, uh, on count one, uh, indicate that it's a no bond case and, and Mr. Fairnot would be required to uh, filed through his public defender in Division 11, a motion to set bond in which the judge in Division 11 would hold a hearing involving sworn testimony to determine whether uh, the proof is evident the presumption is great. And that judge, even if it's determined that that has been proven, the judge can, under uh, the appropriate circumstances, set bond. But I find that this is a no bond case and not a $10,000 case at first appearances. So I do make that change today. The battery charge will, will be a bond of $100 and the criminal mistress charge will be a bond of $150. But no bond on count one until you have your uh, hearing in division 11. You do have the public defender, so stay in touch with your attorney and, and you can request that hearing right away. And your honor, we still ask for no contact, even though he's in custody that he still had no contact with the victim who was not custody. That, that would be appropriate that, you, that I add the uh, two conditions that are listed in the warrant itself. No contact with the victim and no return to the location while the case is pending. The next case is David Gerben. This is a capius uh, from Division 15. That means that an information was filed against David Gerben, charging him with tampering with physical evidence, count two, possession of drug paraphernalia. But it indicates that there was a failure to appear for a case management conference on June the 3rd. At that time, the judge in Division 15 ordered that you be held without bond and your release was revoked. The public defender represents you in division 15. Your next hearing will be in front of that judge and the judge can set new conditions of release or keep you on a no bond status, depending upon what is determined to be the situation. Elizabeth Page Hudson. Yes. 
This is a warrant arrest affidavit. It's a capius that comes from Division 15. The original charges were possession of meth and possession of drug paraphernalia, but there was a plea hearing scheduled for June the 14th, and it's indicated that you failed to appear for that hearing. The judge ordered no bond till you see the judge in Division 15. You have the public defender in Division 15, and your next hearing will determine whether you get a new bond or not. Your Honor, would you be willing to accept uh, um, there, there, um, th that that was that was case 2019 2963. She also has in 2019 CF 2782 the charges of possession of meth and possession of marijuana. And it was it was uh, set for a plea and sentence on June the 14th in that case. And the judge also ordered because she failed to appear no bond. So both of those should be set together for a hearing as soon as possible in front of the judge in Division 15 to determine uh, what should what should be done now. Your Honor, um, would, you, would, would she be um, able to plea and resolve those cases today, or she has to wait? She, she cannot. I, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, take any action on a case once an information has been filed. It's, it's then uh, totally within the trial. Uh, OK, I got it. Thank you. The next case is State of Florence, Katrina Kelly. This is a CAPIUS from Division 14. It is the announcement of a new charge. It, it means that an information has been filed against Katrina Kelly. The charge is second degree murder. It has the following conditions. Uh, no bond, no contact directly with a victim, with a victim, co-defendant or witness. Do not return to the scene of the offense. Do not possession any weapons or firearms. A notice of invocation of constitutional rights has been filed in this case. I appoint the public defender to represent Katrina Kelly in Division 14. It is no bond until you have a hearing in front of the judge in Division 14. The next case is Dylan D. Uh, Dylan DeMarcus Law. This was a Florida uniform traffic citation and it resulted in uh, the following. <coughs> there are six charges listed from 50, 60, Lemming Avenue. The original location was 4759 North Pine Hills Road. And the first observation in the case was 5100 North Lane. These charges are as follows. Count one, uh, aggravated fleeing, attempting to elude no bond. I will be setting bond today. Count two, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Bond set at $4,000. Count three, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, 150. Count four, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, bond 150. Count five, possession of tetrahydrocannabinolis. 
150 and six, resisting an officer without violence a misdemeanor, fine $100. The public defender is appointed to represent Mr. Law in Division 16. The state can be heard at this time request concerning uh, the uh, state's position concerning the no bond status of count one. And I am to take into consideration the facts alleged to uh, make that decision today. We'll ask for a $7,500 bond as count one. No objection to all of the counts being treated as subsidiaries. Possess no weapons or firearms, no drugs or alcohol. Uh, my review of the prior record of Mr. Law, um, as well as the facts alleged uh, from yesterday, the appropriate bond for count one would be 7,500. Because I have set that bond, count two will now become a subsidiary case and we'll have a bond of $150. So it's 7,500, 150, 150, 150, 150, and 100. So the total bond now is $8,200 for the six charges with the condition that you not be in possession of any firearm nor any other kind of weapon, nor be in possession of ammunition, nor be in possession of any substance prohibited by law while the case is pending, to have no contact with anyone that's named or referred to as a victim, witness, or arresting um, officer. You do have the public defender in Division 16. Stay in touch with your attorney so that you know when your next hearing is scheduled. Thank you. Colleen Mahoney. This is a warrant arrest affidavit. It's a capious. It indicates it's the beginning of the case. The state attorney's office has filed an information against you charging petty theft, but with two prior convictions. So it's a felony petty theft charge. Bond is $1,000. I appoint the public defender to represent you in division 19. And I order that you not return to the location alleged while the case is pending and to have no contact with anyone that's named or referred to as a victim or a witness in the case. You can now bond out on a $1,000 bond. This is Veronica Rivera. It's a charge of retail theft, less than $300. It's a felony level, um, I'm sorry, more than $300. It's a felony level um, theft charge. The bond is set at $1,000. I've appointed the public defender to represent you in Division 15. The case comes from yesterday at 4520 South Cimarron. That is a Walmart store. So it's a $1,000 bond and no return to the Walmart located at 4520 South Cimarron Boulevard while the case is pending. And no contact with anyone that's named as a victim or an employee of the Walmart or uh, witness, uh, you do have the public defender in Division 15, so stay in touch with your attorney. And she did qualify for straight PTR, Your Honor. What is the state's position concerning the option of pretrial release as opposed to bond? We'll be in the court's discretion. All right. Um, you will have an option, and I want you to talk with your public defender right now as to what you believe would be best for you. Number one, you can bond out on a $1,000 bond. Or, in the alternative, if you choose to do so, instead of having to post a bond, you would be um, on, released on pretrial release, meaning you'll have to follow the requirements of the pretrial release program. And is the state asking for face-to-face uh, -face if it is pretrial release? No, Your Be standard pretrial release. So you have to make that decision today after talking with your attorney.
time. And yes, Your Honor, she would um, uh, option uh, into the pretrial release program. All right. This this case then will be a pretrial release rather than one thousand dollar bond. The next case uh, is scheduled as Lazard uh, Suffren. Yes, sir. This is a warrant that comes from Orange County Circuit Court. The judge signing this warrant found probable cause to hold you on count one, fraudulent use of personal identification, felony level, count two, giving false name adversely affecting another, And count three, perjury, making a false statement under oath. The judge set the bond at $5,000 on each of the three charges for a total of $15,000. When that's done on a warrant, the uh, total amount is respected at first appearances, and that is, uh, I find that the judge intended that the total be $15,000 for those three charges, even though if it's an on view, uh, we do subsidiary bond amounts. There is an additional problem. Uh, well, first of all, I do appoint a public defender to represent Mr. Suffren in Division 16. So you do have the public defender. But it is indicated here that at the time of the events that caused that warrant, he was out on bond in case number 2019. CF 6742, the charges being identity theft, false identification, having a bond of $1,000 and $100. What's the state's position concerning that prior case? We'd ask the bond be revoked on the Alamon case. Uh, it appears to me that the um, charges from May. Uh, are of the same nature as the new charges from June the 5th. And so I do find it would be appropriate for me at this time to revoke the bond for those prior charges. In Division 17, you have an attorney in that uh, case, Adrian Camino. And so um, I do order that you be held without bond to see the judge in Division 17. You want to get in touch with your attorney in Division 17 to get a hearing to find out whether that judge decides to keep you on a no bond or to give you new conditions of release on that case. But right now, you're held without bond until you see that judge. Next case is Taurus Summers. Yes, sir. This is a warrant arrest affidavit. The case number is 2019 CF 8824. The charge is fair to report. It's in Division 12, and I've appointed the public defender to represent you, and it has a no bond 
um, at this hearing, it will be determined whether that remains that way or whether there is bond set. The case is complicated with the fact that it indicates the date for the warrant is December the 18th of 2018. It refers to that date of December the 18th of 2018. The prior case for which he was out on bond for $3,500 was the same type of charge in Division 17 bonded out on April the 2nd, $3,500 bond, case number 2019 CF 733AO. What's the state's position concerning the new charge or the new warrant and the prior case and how those dates may affect each other? So the prior case has a later, later offense date than this particular case. We so closed that detainer out because it was an error. I'm sorry? We closed that detainer out. It was an error because of the dates of offense. So no, I understand what I'm saying. So for bond purposes, the bond, state request is still a $3,500 bond on this current 19 CF 8824 case. The state has not filed an information on the out on bond case. All right. So no action is, is taken by me today on the prior case. And so that, that case is no longer holding him on a no bond case. He's already bonded on that. On the new case, 2019 CF 8824, I set a bond today at $3,500. And the public defender represents you in Division 12. When you leave today, or, or whenever you bond out, be aware that you are making a new address change because right now you are residing at the jail. So wherever you're going, you want to make that report to, to advise, advise the driver's license office and the sheriff's office where you're, where you're going to be living following your release. I was so, actually arrested making the um, address change at the sheriff's department. Yep. Well, talk to your attorney about the, the appropriate, all I, all I, and I, I'm not as familiar with how all that works as you might be because you have to do it yourself. Yes. I'm only in the, I'm only doing this to make sure you understand that's how it works. Yes. Okay. The next case is uh, Itza Yeras Torres. This is a capius. It indicates that there was an original charge of driving while license revoked, felony level, in Division 19. And this is a failure to appear for a case management conference on May the 23rd. That judge ordered no bond. And so I, you do have the public defender in Division 19. And you'll, your next hearing will be in front of that judge in Division 19. And that judge will decide what to do about the case. Um, and Your Honor, she has indicated um, she was at that time incarcerated in Brevard County. I don't know if that's verifiable through. Um, and, um, and I understand uh, that that is entirely possible. The judge in Division 19 has to decide what to do about that situation okay. because I've, I've found out historically some judges view it one way and some judges view it the opposite way, right. so I don't try to get involved in that. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Wynn, you're welcome. If you reach out to them today, the whatever county jail, they will email you a printout or a fax your printout today of whether or not she was there. And right. maybe you can email that judge and allow them at second session to allow Judge Kirkland to take action on the case. This case is Thaddeus Theodore Williams. This is a, uh, a warrant. It's for a violation of pretrial release. The original charge, possession of MDMA. And you are being held without bond in Division 22, 
to see every public defender. Okay, you have the public defender at, in Division 22. So your next hearing will be in front of that judge and that judge will decide whether you will get new conditions of release. This is Christopher Michael Bauer. Yes, sir. This is an arrest affidavit from yesterday. Disorderly conduct. Bond $250 is from Conway and Curry Ford Road. And it is uh, what is characteristically known as uh, panhandling. And it indicates here that he had been released on April the 18th on a criminal mischief charge in case number 2019 CF 3779. On behalf of the city, um, is there an offer? And on behalf of the state, what is the state's position concerning the prior case? Uh, the offer is adjudication three days for the current case. No action on the Adam Bond case. Okay. You have, the, you have the public defender in Division A, case number 19-MO-1210. Talk with your attorney about what's best for you. Would I be able to? Talk to your attorney oh. first. Oh, one other thing. Factually, he has a pre-trial conference on that felony charge tomorrow. And attending all of my court sessions for that. Bradley Bowen is my attorney for that, and I will deal with that when I. And he's going to go ahead and resolve the case today, Your Honor. What is your full legal name? My full legal name is Christopher Michael Bauer. Date of birth? 5-5-1988. The charge before me today is a Sydney ordinance violation of disorderly conduct. How do you plead? I plead guilty. Did you read and understand your plea form? Yes, sir, I did. Did you have enough time to discuss your options with your attorney? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the public defender? Yes, sir, I'm satisfied. I'll accept sir. the plea at this time. You're adjudicated guilty of a city ordinance violation. And the sentence is three days credit for two. You'll be released later on today. Make sure you make your pretrial conference tomorrow on your felony charge. The uh, additional portion of the sentence on today's disorderly conduct plea is no return to the intersection of Conway and Curry Ford uh, during the next 179 days, and your court costs will go into a civil judgment. Your Honor, the next case we have is Mr. Lamar. Mr. I know you're risking um, On Mr. Lamar, he has multiple cases and a lot of competency issues. The state's going to request that we keep the bond state as is and let the public defender's office file the notice of incompetence and it proceed that way. All right. And is Ray Anthony Lamar before me today? He's a mental health guy. Okay. So uh, I'll appoint the public defender to represent uh, Ray Anthony Lamar on a city disorderly conduct charge, Division A, case number 19, MO1211, and the bond is stayed at $250. And he does have a hold for the open and competent uh, to proceed cases. Do you want to take no action on that, Your Honor? Less for no action. Hold? I'll take no action on the prior case, and the hold is released at this time. <clears throat> and um, it's 
it's just to double check he's not going to be reset right. His appearance was waived. He's not competent to pre so, plea. Pre yeah, I know. So cases. yeah, due to that, we will I, waive. I, we'll waive his I, appearance. I will not. I will not re reset it based upon what I've just been advised. Okay. Uh, Dikali uh, Tanzano Cothrell. This is a charge of resisting an officer without violence from yesterday at 818 Governor's Avenue. It is a misdemeanor charge. Um, are you planning to hire a private attorney? No, sir. Do you think it would be best to request a public defender? I'm not sure because, honestly, I, I thought I was here because I was being held for child support, and then I, on the way going to to get a haircut, and he pulled me over. So okay. Well, I think it would be best for me to appoint the public defender than to represent you at this time. Okay. And we'll find out whether this whether the state has an offer to resolve the case today. There's no offer, Your Honor. All right. You can bond out on this case at five hundred dollars. You have the public defender in Division A. Next case is Aaron Crawford. Um, and your honor, if uh, the public defender is a point on the case, we did have a probable cause challenge uh, to the- um, For oh, Aaron right. Crawford? Uh, yes, your honor. All right. Uh, the public defender is appointed to represent Aaron Crawford. The charge is petty theft. It's from 4750 Millennia Plaza Boulevard. The uh, location is a Target store, and the uh, defense can be heard concerning probable cause. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, based on the affidavit, um, it appears on the face of the affidavit that um, all the writings are um, conclusionary statements or conclusion, conclusion, conclude. Well, yeah, conclusionary statements. Um, Nothing in the affidavit as to an eyewitness, um, surveillance video, um, or um, the finding of an alleged device to uh, disarm uh, the alleged property. Um, and, and based on um, the affidavit, um, we request uh, no probable cause be found um, and the defendant be uh, released on his own recognizance. State's response is it says Roser, who is the Loss prevention officer observed Aaron Loring entering the store and recognized him from a previous incident. And then he follows on with what Lor the officer follows on what Lor Roser saw of the defendant um, doing. I think that's enough for probable cause at this point, Your Honor. Unless the defense is arguing that every sentence should start off with I observed. Well, which I, they would have I'm, argued that, that is too much. My argument is that it, he should have stated that he observed him um, taking whatever he took. Um, not that he observed him entering the store. All right. Uh, I find that for the purposes of first appearances, um, I agree that it's inartfully um, um, stated, but I also believe that it's stated in such a way that it, pro it produces probable cause for first appearances. And so uh, I deny the, the defense motion for ROR and Mr. Crawford will have to post a $250 bond. We ask for no return as well, yes. Yeah. And no return to the Target store while the case is pending. This is Mark Falwell. Mark William Falwell, yes, Your Honor. This is, a, this is a trespass on property after warning a case from 1,000 
car care drive from yesterday. The yes. location of the event is 17707 Seas Drive, which is the Walt Disney World Polynesian Resort. It's alleged in this narrative that the defendant was previously trespassed from all Walt Disney World properties and it gives a trespass warning number. The allegation is therefore trespass on property after warning a first degree misdemeanor with a bond of $500. I appoint the public defender to represent Mr. Falwell in division A. The uh, state can be heard concerning the following. It indicates here from Orange County Corrections Department that Mr. Falwell was out on a pretrial release from Osceola County uh, June the 14th uh, for felony and a misdemeanor charge. Case number 2019 CF 2141. What's the state's position concerning the prior case? We'll leave that court's discretion, Your Honor. The offer is adjudication four days, no return, as to this case. He has credit for two days. All right. I take no action on the Osceola County case, and the, the hold is released for him being out on pretrial release from there. Um, the option today, and you want to talk with your public defender about this, you can either bond out on a $500 bond on the trespass after warning, or if you decide to resolve the case today by entering a plea, the sentence uh, offered by the state is four days, credit for two, no return, court costs. He, Your Honor, he is going to enter for the day. <laughs> so, please, no comment. I'll wait till he asks. Okay, state your full name. Mark William Falwell. <clears throat> so, your middle name is William. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, it has to be noted on the paperwork <clears throat> that it only has Mark Falwell. So, there's a middle name William. Date of birth. 9-16-94. All right. The charge before me today is trespass on property after warning at the Polynesian Resort 17707 Seas Drive. How do you plead to that charge? No contest, Your Honor. Did you read and understand your plea form? I did, Your Honor, yes. Did you have enough time to discuss your options with your attorney? I did, yes. Are you satisfied with the service rendered to you by the Office of the Public Defender? Absolutely. Do yes. you have any questions concerning the charge, the facts of the case, the plea that you're in, or the proposed sentence? Um, no, Your Honor, not this time. Okay. <clears throat> and based upon what has occurred, do you understand that if uh, you show up on Disney, they're going to have you arrested over and over again? Of course, yeah. yeah. All right. I definitely won't go back. I accept the plea at this time. You're adjudicated guilty of trespass on property after warning. The sentence is four days, credit for two. No return to any Disney property during the next 350 days. And you have 350 days from today to pay the court cost of this case. And you need to um, make sure that you understand whatever your obligations are in Osceola County on that prior case. Of course, yes, Your Honor. All right. Larry Lee Frush. This is a charge of trespass after after warning. It comes from 101 North Roslyn. That's Lake Eola Park. It's indicated here that there was a trespassing warning, trespass warning, and that uh, that was violated yesterday at midnight. Um, the, he has not requested the public defender, but there may be an offer from the city. Adjudication. I'm sorry, from the state. Sorry, Your Honor. Adjudication three days. Is three. Two. Three. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
three? Three, yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Frisch, Mr. Frush. Yes. Um, the, you have an option today. You can bond out. Your bond's $500. But in the alternative, if you decide to enter a plea, the sentence would be three days, credit for two. You'll be released later on today, but I'm going to order you not to go back to Lake Yolo Park. Okay. What would you like to do today? Enter a plea or bond out? Plea. Okay, you'll need to read and sign your plea form at this time. It's in front of you. Mr. Frush has entered this plea without benefit of counsel. Um, what is your full legal name? What is your name? Larry Lee Frush. Date of birth? 7-18-44. Okay. We have as your date of birth 7-14-1944. Did you, did you just indicate that you were born on July the 18th or the 14th? July 18th. Okay. So we do have... Uh, a, a small difference there and so that'll be noted that that's what Mr. Frush indicates. Um, where were you born? Where? I was born in Pennsylvania. Okay. And it has as your place of birth here Orlando, but you are uh, indicating today that you were born in Pennsylvania. Is that correct? Yeah, I was born. What, what city? Wayne's, Waynesboro. Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I know of a Waynesboro, North Carolina, but I've never heard of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. There is one? There is one. Okay. And there's a Waynesville everywhere also. Any, in any event, do you have a local residence address? No, I don't. Okay. And did you simply forget that you couldn't go back to Lake Eola? More or less, yes. Okay. I, my so, memory. So what you want to do is concentrate more and remember that if you show up on Lake Eola, they're going to arrest you. I mean, right. if they see you. Exactly. Because you, it's you would not be mistaken for many too many other people. You're very you're very um, singular in your right. appearance. Uh, so they would be looking for you. I would suggest. Yes. Um, how do you plead to the charge? Guilty. Okay, I'll accept the plea at this time. It's it's three days, credit for two, you'll be released later on today. No, but I'm ordering you not to go back to Lake Eola Park and that no returns during the next 179 days and your court costs will be in, in a civil judgment. Okay. Thank you. This is Ryan Demetrius Jarrett. Yes, sir. And your this, Honor. Is a, this is a felony charge. I'm sorry, this is a first-degree misdemeanor charge of battery from 4156 West Oak Ridge Road from yesterday. Your Honor, if the uh, public defender is appointed, we did have a probable cause challenge to this happening. All right. The public defender is appointed to represent Mr. Jarrett in Division A, and you can be heard at this time. Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, based on the uh, uh, totality of the circumstances and the victim's um, alleged statements, that a firearm was just charged at the scene. However, um, no firearm was found. Um, no casings were found on the scene. Um, she didn't identify that um, where those casings were discharged or would have been able to be found. Um, it appeared that that was a, um, an obvious um, fabrication. Um, and the um, defendant statements that he was acting in self-defense, um, I would argue that based on the totality of the circumstances that uh, the officer didn't have a probable cause at that time to um, arrest uh, Mr. Jarrett for uh, battery. What's the state's position concerning the defense argument as to probable cause? says, the victim says, Ryan struck her in the mouth and grabbed her arms where I threatened to kill her. I believe that gave the officer probable cause to arrest him for battery. He didn't arrest him for aggravated battery. He didn't arrest him for possession of a firearm or carrying a concealed firearm or anything like that. He arrested this defendant for the striking of the victim. Which the defendant indicated was in self-defense and due to her 
already fabrication. I believe that her words could not be taken on face value. Then that would make this court have to judge the truthfulness of both the defendant and the victim in that moment. That is not the stage of the process that we are, that is a defense for us to be argued at a later time. This, this is a situation which is, it comes up uh, several times at each session, and that is uh, the author of the narrative is the person who has to make the judgment call as to the believability of each person that has an input into the facts. And in this particular case, uh, the the questioning of both parties' statements is brought up and mentioned, uh, but the the author of the narrative, a deputy, made the decision ultimately to charge this defendant with that misdemeanor charge, notwithstanding all of the other surrounding uh, allegations that were deemed to be uh, not important enough to um, refuse to charge Mr. Jarrett with battery. I find that, that, that there is actually probable cause for battery contained in the narrative. And these other matters are matters that can be brought up later on in the case at a motion to suppress or uh, other hearings if appropriate. So I do find probable cause for the crime of battery because I cannot substitute my judgment at first appearances for anyone else's. Um, the public defender does represent you, Mr. Jarrett, and I, you can now bond out on a bond of $500. And I order that you have no contact with the person that's listed as the victim, Sabrina Mixon, Mixon, and not to be in possession of any weapons, including a firearm while the case is pending. Next case is Cheryl Annette Lapeer. It's a trespassing charge after um, refuses to leave from 9999 East Colonial Drive. That is a 7-Eleven uh, gas, gas station convenience store from yesterday. The public defenders appointed to represent you in Division A and there may be an offer by the state to resolve this case today. Uh, like a withhold with credit for time served, no return. So I want you to talk with your attorney about what is best for you. Uh, the offer is a withhold of adjudication so you would not have a criminal record and it would be time served, you'd be released later on today. You would have court costs that you would have to, um, uh, that would go into, would go into a civil judgment. Uh, you, you. She has indicated <clears throat> she has indicated she wants to uh, resolve her case today.
What is your full legal name? Cheryl Annette Lapeer. And your date of birth? 10-168. All right. The charge that's before me today is trespassing in an occupied structure, refusal to leave, it having been alleged that there was a trespass warning and that you did in fact trespass at that location of 7-Eleven at 9999 East Colonial Drive. How do you plead to that charge? No contest. All right. And a plea of no contest means you, you are not admitting any particular facts, but you have elected out of convenience to resolve the case today. But I do want to make sure we're all talking about the same case, that, that this was in fact a 7-Eleven yesterday and that, and, that, and that the issue was whether, whether you wanted to get a drink even though you were aware you'd been trespassed. Are, are you satisfied that you've had enough time to decide what's best for you as far as entering a plea? I don't, I don't, in other words, I want to make sure uh, you have not, you're, that, that you're satisfied this is the best thing for you to do? Yes. Are you satisfied with your attorney, the public defender? Yes. I accept the plea at this time. You're adjudicated guilty. And the, I'm sorry, it was a withhold. Is that correct? The yes, offer sir. was a withhold? Yes, sir. Okay. I withhold adjudication so you, you have not received a, a, a conviction on this case. And it's time served. Two days credit for two days served. I do order you not to return to that 7-Eleven 9999 East Corona Drive during the next 350 days. And I want to emphasize to you for your own good, you know that if you go back there, they're going to call the deputies and arrest you. So you simply need to find another location other than that place for your own good. I mean, even though you have some sort of dispute with them about that situation. Uh, you don't want to go through this process over and over again just because you have a dispute with them. Um, I, I can read between the lines that there's something going on there that's uh, kind of unusual. Um, the court costs in this case are placed into a civil judgment. This is David Kim Loveless. Yes. It's a case from yesterday from 3600 South John Young Parkway. That's a racetrack gas station. Uh, I think it's the one across the street from the jail, essentially. Count one is petty theft. Count two is trespass after warning. It's a total of $600 bond. And the public defenders appointed to represent you. There may be an offer from the state to resolve this case today. There is not, Your Honor. He has multiple prior pay thefts. Okay. Um, you need to stay in touch with your attorney, and you can bond out now on a $600 bond. I order that while the case is pending, no return to the racetrack gas station. Dawn Ramagli. Medical, Your Honor. Okay, be, be reset for tomorrow. The next case is Crucita Sanchez. She refused. All right. She is, um, this will be reset for tomorrow. She's held without bond because of her prior three cases for which she had bonded at the time of the event that caused her to be arrested yesterday. Reset.
Marcos Aviles de Lima. Mental health. Okay. He's being held for Polk County, and they can pick him up within 72 hours. It's a violation of probation for carrying a concealed firearm, no bond. Uh, reset for tomorrow. Catherine Floretta Johnson. This is also a hold for Polk County. It's a contiguous county, and so they're supposed to pick you up within 24 hours of being notified. They often do not, but generally speaking, this being Tuesday, you should be picked up this week by Polk County. And the matter that holds you there is fair to appear for a pretrial conference on a trespass after warning charge. You have a $1,000 bond. If you choose to do so, you can bond out here and then it would be up to you to find out when and where you're supposed to show up there. And there's a number of different courthouses. There's Winter Haven, Haines City, Lakeland, and so on. I mean, but if you do not bond out or you choose not to bond out, they are supposed to pick you up right away and take you to the right location. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is uh, Juan Diego Vieja. Vieja. Yes, sir. This is uh, an out of county warrant for Santa Rosa County. The only thing I know about Santa Rosa County is it's somewhere in the panhandle. Okay. And they are supposed to pick you up within 72 hours, but that's a long way. It's about as far away as Charlotte, North Carolina. But uh, they will take you there if you have no Orange County cases. They've been notified to pick you up. And so. The, the, they will pick you up and take you there. The matter is a violation of probation. The original charge was battery and resisting with violence, and it indicates that it's no bond status. Uh, question. That, those charges were a part of my DUI, and I was under the impression that I finished it. So why are all the other charges along with those are not a part of okay. this charge? Um, my answer is um, there's no way for me to know because what I just read to you is all I have. I don't have the file. But do you think it's a mistake? Um, absolutely, because it's been, it's been six if, years. If that's the case, that's what I call a red flag. And what we will do is we will double check on that and, and we will try to find out whether, whether it is possible that your case was resolved and this is, this is a warrant that is, has been left outstanding uh, without uh, the proper um, review to make sure it's all gone. We'll double check on that to make sure it's, an, it's a current active warrant. Thank you. In the meantime, uh, if they pick you up, then that's what happens. Thank you. Uh, when you get there, they'll have the entire file and it'll be resolved if you get there. But we'll try to find out between now and then. Errol Russell Horn the fourth. Okay. Uh, we'll reschedule this for tomorrow. Uh, Alkira Goshe Jones. This is an arrest affidavit from the Orlando Police Department for violation of probation out of county. Miami Dade is the count is the location. So you're being held for Miami Dade. Judge, they haven't picked her up. They haven't picked her up. They have not come to pick her up. Okay. She's scared of a freeze. All right. This is what I will indicate on that. Um, I have come to find out that sometimes Miami Dade does not go outside of their. Um, county, but they ordinarily say so, and this one apparently doesn't say that, and so when did the process start? That is, how long have we been holding her for this issue? Ready on June 15th. And so it's now been nine days? Correct. Or ten days. Now it's been ten days. Um, and it's a violation of probation for grand theft. 
What's the state's position when we get to this point of 10 days holding somebody, so if any? State leaves in the, in the course of action. However, if Miami-Dade has been notified and they've not picked the her up in the elect time, state's arguing that she should be ROR and Miami-Dade should take I, the direction. I think 10 days is, is enough that if they were going to pick her up, they would have. And so at this time, with regard to Alkira Voshe Jones, case number 1819887 Miami Dade. This is now an ROR. You'll be released today. But it's up to you to find out what's going on because this could occur over and over again. Uh, in other words, it, it indicates that it's an active case in Miami Dade for violation of probation. But I'm going to release you from this jail. Then it's up to you to, to get to the right location in Miami Dade to get this resolved. Otherwise, you know, could happen again next week. You get picked up for this. Okay. All right. Yes. Your Honor, may I approach Mr. Muller's case? Yes. This is a reset for probable cause. Yesterday, I did get a supplemental information from the officer. I know he's represented by private counsel, so I did give a copy to the CO to pass to um, Mr. Muller without speaking to him, obviously, about the case. Um, the officer says it was the crack of the windshield went from, I guess, the driver's side to the middle of the window. And that was the reason for the stop. Yes. <clears throat> and the rest of the information was contained in the affidavit from yesterday. All right. The uh, incident report, a copy of which I have received, states under the category of narrative, on June 22, 2019, I conducted a traffic stop on a blue Audi bearing Florida tag L-I-L-E-I-R-1-U-4-2. The reason I stopped this vehicle was for a cracked windshield. The windshield had a crack that started at the bottom of the driver's side windshield and came up at an angle toward the center of the windshield, making it unsafe for the driver. The crack on the windshield, however, was not impeding the driver's view. So the state's argument is what concerning this issue of probable cause now that uh, the Officer, the dep that now that the deputy has stated the crack did not impede the view. Uh, Your Honor, I believe that once the officer can still stop the um, vehicle to notify them that they need to repair their windshield, that is um, part of the original statute I cited yesterday, the 316 statute. Um, and the same way for those broken tail light, the officer could inform the driver that and stop them that the tail light was broken and inform that it needs to be repaired. So that is our argument is that the officer had probable cause to stop them, not necessarily to impound the vehicle, but to inform the driver that that issue with the vehicle needed to be repaired. And the private attorney was planning to be here today for this? I don't know one way or the other. She was obviously in court yesterday and notified that it was being reset for today. I don't know one way or the other. She didn't say yes or no yesterday when she was in court. Okay. Um, I find that the incident report is sufficient uh, for probable cause today. And so Mr. Um, Muller, um, because I found probable cause, it means that you will um, still have a bond of $1,000. And, and and what is the status of the two prior cases for which he was out on bond? Same little question, no action on the out on bond cases. All right. No action on the prior cases. So you can now bond out.
This is the second session for courtroom one for Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. First case from this group will be George Holland. This is State of Florida, it's George Holland. It's case number 19 CF 3919. The public defender is appointed to represent George Holland on the charge of grand theft, third degree. Bond set at $2,000 on the capius. No contact directly with the victim, co-defendant or witness and not to return to the scene of the offense. Public Defender does represent George Holland in Division 10. You can now bond out. <clears throat> affidavit from earlier today. The location was Old Apopka Road and East 13th Street. <clears throat> the charge is possession of cocaine. The public defender is appointed to represent you in Division 14. You can now bond out on a $1,000 bond and a condition of not to be in possession of any substance prohibited by law while the case is pending. State of Florida, it's Christian Moses Moises uh, Ramos. Yes. This is a, an arrest affidavit from earlier this morning at Grove Park Drive and North Division. <clears throat> uh, the first charge is a felony charge of possession of MDMA, $1,000 bond. Count two is a misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia, bond 100, total bond $1,100. The public defender is appointed to represent you in Division 19. What is the state's position concerning the case for which he had been released in April? Possession of drug paraphernalia misdemeanor. Well, um, we can take no action, Your Honor. All right. Uh, no action is taken on the prior case, so the hold from the jail is now released, and the total bond is $1,100. State of Florence, Lorenzo Spell. Yes, sir. There are two matters before me. The first is a warrant arrest affidavit. <clears throat> it is for violation of probation. The original sentence was August the 23rd of 2018. <clears throat> the first count was aggravated stalking, one year of, prob of community control, followed by three years of probation for count two, aggravated stalking. Judge Barber, on February the 14th of 2019, ordered that you be held without bond on two matters, first being a, a, um, a changing of address without uh, uh, obtaining consent. So that is a technical violation, but the second condition is a violation of condition number five, alleging a substantive violation of committing a new crime. <coughs> and that being on February the 10th of 2019. 
you're being held on a no bond status until you see the judge in Division 16. <coughs> the public, public defender is appointed to represent you in Division 16. The second matter is an arrest affidavit from earlier this morning, West Colonial and Dorcher Road. Count one, possession of cocaine with intent to sell or deliver, bond $15,000. Count two, a felony charge of tampering with physical evidence, bond is set by me today at $150. Count three is a misdemeanor resisting without violence, the bond is set by me at $100. So your total bond is $15,250. The public defender does represent you in Division 22 on that arrest affidavit from this morning. The address of the incident that's the subject of the case is West Colonial and Dorcher Road. The next case is Michelle Thomasy. Thank you. <clears throat> Billy Ray Walker. This is a capius that has come from Division 20. The original charges were possession of heroin and possession of drug paraphernalia. The judge in Division 20 found that you failed to appear for a plea hearing on June the 20th of 2019. So it's from uh, uh, late last week. You're being held without bond until you see the judge in Division 20, and you have the public defender uh, representing you on that matter. There is a uh, an indication also that you were <clears throat> previously released on February the 18th for uh, on the charges of burglary of a structure and grand theft. In Division 19, case number 2019-CF1617, uh, does he have the public defender for that case? Yeah. Okay. You have the public defender in that case as well. What is the state's position concerning the earlier case? Yeah. Would you repeat that? No action, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, the, the hold on Mr. Walker for that prior case is released at this time. No action taken on the prior case. You can now um, <clears throat> get a, uh, obtain a hearing through the public defender from Division 20 to see if that judge is willing to give you new conditions. But right now, it's no bond to see that judge. So um, I have... I. He's a little um, confused right now. There was a motion to quash that KPS, which was um, filed on the 20th. Um, he has been informed that there was a ruling on that motion. However, it's not in the um, system yet. Um, so, um, or it's not in, um, it's not in, it's not on the, uh, uh, the, the, the clerk system, so. May I suggest that uh, this First appearance, first appearance be the balance of it be continued until tomorrow to find out what that what the ruling is on that, uh, and the judge can take action based upon whatever that ruling is. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Eric Paul Turk. This is a violation of condition of pretrial release. The original charge is trespassing, and the judge in Division A, County Court, uh, determined that you have a bond of $2,500. Uh, are you represented by an attorney? Do you have a private attorney or the public defender? Public defender. Public defender? All right. Uh, the public defender does represent uh, Mr. Turk and uh, Judge Bigney. Uh, on July the 19th, set the bond at $2,500. You can now bond out. Sir, is there a way we can make that a little bit lower? I cannot do that.
but you can apply to the judge in Division A for a bond reduction. I mean, this is, I, I just in other words, I would, I, would like, I would like to go home, sir. I, I understand that. And that judge set the bond, and so it's not, it's not correct for me to interfere with that. Um, why, why did you set it so high? Um, I don't have an answer for that because I don't have the file, but the judge that had the file, Judge Bigney, is an accomplished judge, and, and she made that decision. So I'm just informing you of what the status is, and you must apply to that judge for a bond reduction. All right. I mean, The next case is State of Florida against Heaven. Uh, Christ. What you got, John? Right. What was this? What was the status? Chris uh, R R. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alan Knox Travis. Well, Thank you. Justin Black. He's medical. Okay. We'll, reske we'll reschedule Justin Black for tomorrow. He has a bond of, that totals $600 at the present time and has not yet had an opportunity to request an attorney. So first appearance tomorrow. Daniel Ray Rakes. Yes, sir. All right. This is a misdemeanor charge from yesterday, uh, from earlier this morning at Edgewater and North John Young Parkway. I think there's a, an, that, that, that description, I don't think Edgewater and John Young Parkway meet, but I'm going to check on that. It's probably, it's probably where Edgewater and Lee Road cross. Yes, sir. Let's see. Yes, okay. Um, it's uh, in the vicinity of the, of the Popeye's restaurant. It's a possession of drug paraphernalia. It's a first degree misdemeanor, and I've appointed the public defender to represent you. Uh, does the state have an offer to resolve this case at first appearances? Um, uh, no objection to ROR or credit the time served adjudication. And uh, Mr. Rakes would like to resolve his case today, so. All right. And that offer was? Adjudication credit for time served. Thank you. I can get my house, my apartment, so. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay. I finally what, got two jobs. Huh? What, what is your full legal name? Daniel Ray Rakes. And your date of birth? 41169. Thank you. Yes, sir. The charge before me today is possession of drug paraphernalia. It's a first degree misdemeanor, possession of drug paraphernalia. How do you plead? Guilty. Did you have an opportunity to read and understand your plea form? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions you want to ask me concerning the charge, the facts of the case, the plea, or the proposed sentence? No, sir. All right, are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, sir, thank you. All right, I just want to make sure we're all thinking about the same case. Earlier this morning, uh, there was an arrest at Edgewater and John Young Parkway. Um, according to this, but it's, uh, I believe it's actually Lee Road in Edgewater. Um, and it had to do with a crack pipe. Yes. Is, that the, is that the arrest that you're talking about today? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll accept the plea. You're adjudicated guilty and the sentence is one day, credit for one day served. You'll be released later on today. Your court costs will be placed into a civil judgment. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. The next case is Everett Allen Troyer. This is an arrest affidavit from earlier this morning, a little after midnight at East Maitland Boulevard and Trelago Way in Maitland, city of Maitland. And this is uh, the same charge as the last one, but it's just set out in, a, in different words. 
possession of drug equipment. It's the same as para a paraphernalia charge. Um, it's a first degree misdemeanor. The public defender is appointed to represent you. The bond is $500, and there may be an offer from the state to resolve this case today. No objection to ROR or credit for time served. Okay, I want you to talk with your attorney. You have an option. You can enter a plea and it'll be time served, but you'll have an adjudication and court cost. Or if you decide that you want to contest the case, the state has agreed to an ROR, meaning you will not have to postpone in order to secure your release, only a promise that you will show up for each and every hearing. So, uh, Your Honor, he would like um, today he will, um, we request an ROR. All right. At this time then, instead of a $500 bond, the defendant is, is to be released on his own recognizance. Uh, bear in mind that any judge uh, that sees you from here on in will be aware that you were given the opportunity to get out without having to post a bond. So you need to make sure that you actually do show up on time and, each, and be there for each and every hearing uh, from here on. Now just for the record that this, the offer was revoked at this time. All right. That's the last uh, document I have, and we have no more persons to be seen. That concludes the Afternoon. hearings today. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Court's Your Honor.